Tol. Ter. Ser. Ser ter pato. Sana. Sa ko. Sir. Oh. Nandito, nandito po ako sa Imos Cavite. Ha? Ah? Pero nandito po ako sa Imos Cavite. Ma madaming tao, balik ta rin ko dito, makita mo marami tao. <laughs> Ayo. Uh, present po ako sa meeting ninyo. Okay, uh, present po, present ka. Uh, balik po ako mamaya, uh, uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat sa mga Pilipino. Salamat po. Sige, sige, thank you. We have a quorum.
This meeting is hereby called to order. I would like to acknowledge the virtual presence of uh, Senators uh, Tolentino and uh, Amy Marcos, members of the, the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. This morning, we are going to tackle House Bill number 8783 of the Private Security Industry Act. May I request our committee secretary to please acknowledge our resource persons present today? Thank you, sir. We would like to acknowledge the following guests. From the office of, uh, from the DILG, we would like to acknowledge the presence of Yusek Echeverri and Asek Manuel Felix. From DTI, we would like to to acknowledge the presence, virtual presence of Mr. Philip Jason Roque. Uh, from TESDA, we would like to acknowledge the presence of attorney Clifford Pasqual and uh, Josephine Viray. From the Philippine National Police, we would like to acknowledge the physical presence of Major General Ferdinand Daway. Morning, sir. Uh, Colonel Alfredo Dangani. Sir. Morning, sir. Uh, oh, General Sidney Villaflor. Morning, sir. Uh, Brigadier General Romel Mitra. Morning, sir. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Austria. Morning, sir. And uh, Lieutenant Colonel Domer Tadeo. Morning, sir. From the Security and Exchange Commission, we would like to acknowledge the pres virtual presence of Attorney Gerardo Tan. Uh, we would also like to acknowledge the presence of physical presence a while ago and now virtual presence of uh, General Adipay. Uh, we would like also to acknowledge the presence, physical presence of the following from the security industry. Uh, Mr. Joel Jesus Supan. Good morning, sir. Uh, retired Lieutenant General en Enriquez Galang. Good morning, sir. Uh, Mr. Ramiro Busalanan. Virtual presence. We would like to recognize his presence, sir. And we would also like to recognize the physical presence of Colonel Manuel Espejo. Morning, sir. We would also like to recognize the virtual presence of Mr. Michael Datuin. Uh, we would also like to recognize the virtual presence of uh, from the Campus Security and Safety Management Association, Dr. Eulogio Reyes. From the Mall Security Management Association of the Philippines, we would like to recognize the presence of virtual presence of Colonel Almus Albe. From the Inter International Engagement of the EMMCE Consultants Incorporated, we would like also to recognize the virtual presence of Colonel Manuel Briones. For the record, sir, we also have invited uh, the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, Pad Pau, probably Mr. Bergado will be coming in soon, sir. And we have, have also invited the, the Philippine Society of Industrial Security, however they send their regrets, sir. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Kumsek. Uh, again, uh, good morning sa inyong lahat. Uh, virtually present at saka physically present, sir. Alam nyo, uh, mag-preside ka ng uh, ganitong uh, hearing. Tapos mga resource person mo, uh, instructors mo pa sa PMA, intimidate ka eh. <laughs> so, thank you, Joel Galang, sir, for uh, coming over, sir. Uh, Sopan, sir, and uh, Colonel Espio, sir. Salamat sa inyong pagdating at sa lahat na uh, andito ngayon na uh, virtually present. Uh, General Aglipay is uh, going to join us uh, virtually.
after his presence doon sa loob ng CR kanina. <laughs> Maganda ang umaga muli sa ating lahat. Among the many purposes of the law is to establish standards for society, maintain order, and protect living. It is clear that the peace of legislation must fulfill its purposes. Should a law fail doing so, it becomes our duty to ask whether such law should be amended or ultimately repealed. Today, we shall be discussing House Bill 8783 for the Private Security Industry Act, which aims to repeal Republic Act 5487, otherwise known as the Private Security Agency Law. For context, RA 5487 was approved on June 21, 1969. Today is June 1, 2021, which means that this law is only a few days shy from celebrating its 52nd year of enactment. Malapit na pala mag-retire itong law na ito. <clears throat> During the age of 56. Surely, in a span of 52 years, the private security industry has seen its share of changes and adjustments. The most obvious question that we must raise in this hearing is whether RA 5487 is still capable of providing order to the private security industry as well as protecting the rights of those who belong to it. If not, then it is likewise our duty to identify its gaps and it and inadequacies and to shed light on how bill or uh, how house bill 8783 addresses the, these problems nararapat lamang na ating bigyan pansin at halaga ang industriyang tumutulong sa ating mga kapulisan upang mapanatili ang seguridad ng ating mga komunidad kung sa ilalim ng umiiral na batas ay tila hindi sila napapahalagahan Kung hindi, kung hindi na sapat ang umiiral na batas upang tugunan ang mga pangangailangan nila at ng mga tao at kumpanyang kukuha sa kanila, marahil nga ay dapat nang gumawa ng panibagong batas. I began my statement by establishing some purposes of the law. Indeed, the end that we envision for today is that we may help to establish standards for, for and protect the rights and liberties of the private security industry and those involved in it. After all, those who afford us protection and security must also be protected and secured under the law. I thank you all, not only for being present physically or virtually, but also in anticipation of a meaningful and fruitful discussion in this hearing. Thank you and good morning again. May we know if uh, any of the senators present today would like to deliver the uh, preliminary statement. Is uh, Senator Aimee Marcos? Hola, uh, Senator Tolentino will be joining later. Ah, okay. So, we will have the opening statements of our uh, first yung ating mga physically present muna na mga uh, resource speakers. Can I start with the PNP? To uh, the Honorable Chairman of the uh, Public uh, Order Committee, as well as uh, Dangerous Drugs. The Novable uh, Senator and also a mentor of uh, the PNP. A Novable uh, Senator uh, Ronald Bato de la Vosa, sir. The uh, Novable members of uh, this committee are in uh, the cyberspace, members of the Senate. Our uh, representatives from the different uh, private security industries representatives from uh, Pau Pau, 
our colleagues in the PNP, we have heard, uh, as mentioned a while ago, the Chief uh, Sosia, Police Brigadier General uh, Sidney Villaflor, and the Chief uh, Firearms and Explosive Office, Police Brigadier General uh, Romil Mitra, and their uh, respective staffs. Fellow workers in government, friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. First of all, uh, on behalf of our uh, Chief PNP, General Guillermo Lorenzo Eliasar, we would want to thank uh, the Honorable Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa for inviting us to attend and participate in this uh, public hearing and submit its position paper on House Bill number 8783, titled An Act strengthening the private security industry appealing for the purpose republic act number 5487 entitled an act to regulate the organization and operation of private detective watchmen or security guards agencies as amended the pnp is in unison with the wisdom of the congress in pursuing the legislative measure the private security industry has grown rapidly since the advent of Republic Act number 5487, as mentioned by the Honorable Chairman, that it's almost already 52 years that we have this law. The rapid advancement in technology as well as the emergence of noble practices in the private security industry have rendered the present law unresponsive and incapable of regulating the emerging fields of security services. On the foregoing statements, the PNP reiterates that although private security agencies may be allowed to own and possess firearms, the same should be in consonance with prevailing laws, rules, and regulations. And along this line, we will be submitting our position on this aspect. And in addition to it, is uh, we would want also to recommend that the Praise Supervisory Office for Security and Investigation Agencies be deleted from the definition of accreditation under Section 4, paragraph A. This will authorize other specialized PNP units, such as uh, the Police Security and Protection Group and the PNP EOD K9 Group to issue the appropriate certification or authority needed by persons involved in the private security industry. So with this, uh, once again, sirs, moms, thank you very much for seeking the position of the PNP on this important legislative matter and rest assured of our continued support on matters of mutual concern. Mabuhay at God bless. Thank you, uh, Police Major General uh, Ferdinand Daway. Uh, next, uh, may we hear from uh, uh, my idol, uh, Lieutenant General Enrique Galang, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Your Honor. Uh, honorable members of the committee, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are very pleased and honored and privileged to be invited during this hearing for the stakeholders in the industry, the private security operators themselves, as represented by uh, my advisory council, being the chair of the social advisory council, to be listened to. Our proposal, sir, will center actually on preparing the industry and its profession to be global, uh, uh, globally uh, uh, certified and qualified for the simple reason that we have to prepare for ASEAN integration. And in my five years of stay in the Bureau of Immigration representing the country for the political security aspect of ASEAN integration, our ASEAN neighbors are already prepared to enter the Philippines to provide security services. 
because the ASEAN integration has five uh, priorities right now. It is very fortunate for us that we will have the time to prepare because the priorities right now are the capital, the investments, the products, and then later on services and professionals. And therefore, it really is a must that we have to prepare through the enactment of uh, an amendment to the law on private security agency so that the industry and its profession will not die a natural death once our ASEAN neighbors will enter our market. And also, I had the opportunity prior to the pandemic in being invited together with Colonel Espejo here of uh, Padpau to the yearly international summit on private security, always hosted by global security providers led by Huawei of China, one of the biggest global security provider. And we saw there that the trend now of private security is precisely to be global in its uh, operations. And if we are exporting domestic helpers, why don't we export also professionally trained private security professionals? In our several yearly meetings during the summit, we have consistently asked CEOs of global uh, certified security provider how much is the basic pay for those who are employed outside of their country and the minimum is two two thousand us dollars basic pay only wala pa yung mga incentives and honoraria as a matter of fact one of the successful stories of global security provider particularly huawei security agency is that through the the boarding of uh, professionally trained guards on board ships, they were able to resolve already the piracy in Somalia because of the private security personnel boarded on ships. Kaya wala na tayong naririnig na piracy sa Somalia. It is unfortunate for our country na ang plus point ng piracy ngayon, downside of the Philippines, courtesy of the Abu Sayyaf, hindi na sa Somalia. And therefore, we would like to prepare the industry and its profession to be global also. And it is very simple only in our presentation. It will only need one provision that will be included in the proposed law. If I am at liberty to already discuss this, Your Honor. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. You have the floor. The first is we can only include a provision that will state that restrictive provisions of this proposed act may be waived upon application by the private security agency and approval by the PMP SOSIA CSG in favor of the listed requirements of duly recognized global certifying bodies. At present, Your Honor, there are two certifying bodies, the United Nations itself and the Switzerland-based certifying body that is globally recognized. So for public for, for private security agencies aspiring to be qualified and certified as global security providers. If we can insert this in the law, then it will take time for any private security agency to be globally uh, certified because of the very restrictive requirements also. Because if you will not be certified as a global security provider, you cannot offer your services to other countries. My point here is, Kung tayo ay natutuwang mag-export ng domestic helpers, why not professionally train security personnel? However, we cannot level up the training of our current guards right now whose salaries are only equivalent to a janitor's pay in spite of the so many requirements and trainings before any guard can be issued by the SOSIA of the license to exercise security profession. profession and damning requirements. That is why, if we will not increase their salaries, then mawawala tayo na recruitment. In my case alone, I have lost 200 guards to the Grab, to the Panda, to the Lalamub, kasi mas malaki ang kinikita nila. In Ensher alone, in our limited study, yung mga food delivery earns at least 1,000 pesos a day that the posted guard in NCR cannot earn, 540 pesos lang sila a month. So, nuwawala sila, nagre-resign sila. 
pero kung maaakyat ma natin ang wages nila, then we can level up the training also to be world class. And we have two proposals, Your Honor. The first uh, by the way, sir, before you continue, uh, for the record, may, may we know what particular provision in this uh, proposed measure siya sabi mong uh, restrictive uh, provision? Well, the restrictive provision among others, Your Honor, is that we still follow the minimum wage uh, determined by the different regional by that wage board, which is actually equivalent only to a janitor's pay. I am not belittling the janitors, but the point is, yung security personnel must have a higher minimum wage compared to janitors and other uh, general workers as provided for by our regional paper type wage boards. Yes, sir, but uh, for, for clarity purposes, uh, yung sinasabi naman dyan na minimum wage loss, minimum lang, minimum lang. You can raise that up if you want to, but uh, minimum lang sinasabi niyan, hindi, hindi bababa. So meaning, kung gusto mong maging global at you want, we want to offer uh, higher salaries, Pwede na lang siyang pataasan. There's no restriction on increasing. But there is a restriction in reducing. That, that is very true, Your Honor. Yeah. But the minimum is equivalent to a, labor, uh, a janitor's pay only. And there is nobody in the industry that I know of that will increase the minimum. As a matter of fact, there are still clients who do not pay for the minimum. That to is the totoo yan, sir, totoo yan. condition yeah, that we have. But if we will include in the law, that the minimum wages for the security personnel will be different, and then they have no choice except to follow it. And nothing in the law prescribes that. It remains to be the minimum as what is applied now. And so our proposal, uh, Your Honor, will be two options. First is to authorize the chief PMP being the person in authority for the implementation of the private security agency law to organize a separate tripartite wage boards to determine the appropriate minimum wages for the security professionals, provided they are higher than the minimum being determined by the existing regional tripartite wage boards. If this will not be possible, our second option is simply insert in the law requiring the existing regional uh, tripartite wage boards to separately determine the minimum wages for the security professionals, again, provided they are higher than what are determined for the general workers. So, kung masihing it yun, then yung restriction na na minimum pa rin, eh, mawawala yun. So, there will now be two determinations, minimum wages for workers in general and minimum uh, wages for the security professional. And if we can increase the wages of the security professionals, then we can level up the training to prepare them to become world-class for those aspiring to be globally certified as security provider. Then, of course, also... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, nakikita ko, sir. If we create a separate tripartite uh, uh, committee for setting uh, another uh, standard for the minimum of security uh, specialist. Baka mamaya, later on, itong mga taxi driver mag-hihingi, uh, mag, uh, mag, uh, mag demand na naman ng separate na uh, minimum wage. Kasi yung minimum niya na set up by, uh, by the law is uh, para sa everyone yan, para sa lahat talaga yan. But yun nga, sinasabi natin, kung mag-create another, that... It will open up. Uh, it will open floodgates for other sectors to demand their own uh, standard. Also, so baka mamaya malaking uh, problema na yan later on. Well, Your Honor, uh, the security industry is different, considering that it has its own regulatory body as compared to other workers. It's the only that really uh, is responsible for them. In the case of the industry, we have a separate regulatory body, except that it has no authority to determine the minimum wages. My point is, there are so many trainings before a person could, could exercise his security profession. First, he has to undergo the pre-licensing course. 
Second, wherever he will be posted, like mall, he is again required to undergo mall security calls. If it is in the bank, bank security calls. If it is in the airport, aviation security calls, and so many others. In every three years, he has to undergo repressive calls. But for the other workers, there is no such training and repressive courses and specialized courses required. But why is it then that the security guard undergoing so many specialized training will have only the same minimum wages as compared to other workers? I, I think we can justify it, Your Honor, by just simply uh, allowing uh, the other options no, for the industry to have its own tripartite waste board, or simply requiring the existing regional tripartite waste board to separately determine the minimum wages for the security personnel. It is uh, well taken. Your, 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 uh, your points are being well taken. Thank, thank, thank you very Please much, sir, continue. And, and thirdly, to effectively fight transnational crimes, particularly terrorism, we can make use of the professionally trained security personnel. Because right now, we yes. have the Bachelor of Science in Industrial Security Administration, and I happen to be a member of the technical working group. And my chair of the technical working group is present here, Mr. Joel Lasupan. So it was already approved by CHED, offered by different schools already. Our recommendation here, uh, Your Honor, is for the graduates of this course later on, and there are no graduates yet right now, to be included as signatory to a building plan before a permit for the building construction can be issued side by side with the civil engineers. Because we all know that the civil engineer is there to determine the strength of the materials to be used for the building. And the architect is there primarily for the beauty, for aesthetic. But who will now determine that the design, particularly the interior of the building, will conform to the basic requirement of safety and security? It only requires an experienced safety and security professional to harmonize the requirements of safety and security. Kasi pagka hindi ka professionally experienced, nagbubungguan your honor yung safety and security requirements. Nagbubungguan yan. And therefore, prior to the issuance of permit to build a building, three signatories must be had and it has to be required by law. To also level up again the professional security officers. And then so, second... So in that case, sir, uh, you mean to say a private entity can be a regulating body for the issuance of uh, license, pag ganun? Our proposal, Your Honor, is for the civil security group because... Okay, it's, okay. Uh, to, to, it, it needs to be a government uh, agency yes, that Without, will uh, undertake such uh, action. Yes, sir. So, the civil security group will enter into the picture after the building has been uh, constructed, before any occupancy can be issued, occupancy permit, the building owner must first submit to the civil security group in an emergency preparedness plan for the occupants. And it has to be rehearsed by the professional safety and security officer if it will work. Then it has to be reviewed at least every six months or one year because we all know that even if a building is newly constructed, within a year there are so many changes already internally. So. When, when the emergency preparedness plans have been approved, then it is only time for the civil security group to issue all the local government unit in coordination with the CSG the uh, occupancy permit. Right now, your owner, you build the building, and then after construction, you know, occupy it. Well, well, right now, sir, the, the, the present practice is that uh, the Bureau of Fire Protection is the ones. Uh, uh, giving the fire safety, fire safety, uh, how, how do you call it? Clearance? Clearance, yes. Sir. Fire safety clearance. So in that case, uh, magiging, in your proposal, magiging dalawa na. Meron but, ng fire, meron pang police uh, clearance. We, that is through your honor, but when we... 
when we review the fire code of the Philippines, basically what is required by the uh, fire uh, services only, there is a fire escape and a fire extinguisher. But in the case of what we are proposing, every nook and cranny of the design must be reviewed by the safety and security professional who will be a graduate of the course that we have uh, proposed for approval by uh, CHED, which is already approved. Because in the course, thanks to my chairman, very knowledgeable, we captured practically all aspects of uh, security and safety. In addition to the... Is, uh, sir, uh, is it being practiced by other countries? Mm, ganyan? Meron? Meron yes, back? sir. Before you can occupy a newly constructed building, you have to have an emergency preparedness plan, including hosting... May maybe you have a particular country na gumagamit ng system na yan? I, I, I will submit to you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Later. Thank you. So our point is, we will be assured that once a building will be occupied, then there is a working emergency preparedness plan for earthquake, for even for hostage situation that can occur inside the building then this is a big help to the PMP because they will know how to approach it. Because there is somebody who will be assisting the PMP, the, the safety and security personnel that reviewed the, the design of the building. If you will notice, Your Honor, we have a, a tragedy in the resource world. Isang tao lang yan, pero nagkagulo, ang dami na matay. Kasi walang maka-assist sa PMP. Kasi walang makapagsabi kung ano yung design. Only to find out later, Your Honor, I was there during the hearing, na meron palang alternate operation sa uh, room na hindi sinabi sa PNP. Kung sinabi na meron, ay eh, di nakita isa ng pala yung tao doon. So in other words, preparation is a must for any building. So that this will be a big help to the PNP in addressing any emergency inside a building if and when the graduates of the course that we have uh, recommended for approval, which is already approved, uh, will be part of the signatory for the building plan before a building permit can be issued. And after the building has been constructed for an emergency preparedness plan to be rehearsed, reviewed, and approved, and we are recommending the civil security group. Uh, my, my point, uh, excuse me, um, my point is that uh, just in case uh, the government legislation, yan, do you think uh, the PNP will uh, accept to the proposal that they will be getting the queue from a civilian entity in order for them to approve uh, any clearance? Baka mamaya, pag i-approve natin yan, ang PNP will, will uh, say that uh, mag-create kami ng sarili namin siya para sigurado kami. Kami yung, yung, yung uh, ganun na need, that kind of need na kailangan natin ngayon, sabi na PNP, under the CSG, mag-create kami ng subunit na mag-certify uh, that, that, uh, that, uh, that a certain building is safe for occupancy. Baka mamaya sabihin nila, oh, we'll not take the cue from any civilian na uh, Entity, gagawa kami sa real unit. So magkakaproblema tayo na naman dyan ngayon. You are perfectly correct, correct Your Honor. Yes, sir. That is why in our proposal, we have to enhance the the functions and the authority of the CSG together with the SOSIA. Just like a building permit, it is issued by the local government unit or in the case of a national uh, structure by DPWS. So in like manner, what we are concentrating on will be the use of the building that was constructed. And that the use for building occupancy may be given by law to an existing government entity, such as the civil security group. Because when you define civil security, it involves the security of uh, facilities and infrastructures, Your Honor. It's only adding to the function of the CSG, which can be directed to really put up and build up its expertise on the matter, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Um, your, your ideas are uh, very well-meaning. Uh, nakikita ko, magandang magandang. Pero on the other hand naman, uh, nakikita ko, it might counter, mag magka-counter yan sa simplification of uh, yung ease of doing business natin ba? 
Kasi sasabihin na naman ng mga negosyante, sabi ng is of doing business, pag pakunti ano yung requirements namin ngayon, dinagdaga na naman ninyo. Walang, meron na kami fire safety, meron magkakaroon pa kami ng uh, uh, CSG safety clearance if uh, we will go by that uh, proposal na gusto mo. So yun, yun lang, I'm just... Uh, I'm just uh, sharing with you my thoughts na pwede ang uh, magreklamo yung mga negosyante na maragdaga na naman sila ng additional instead of uh, uh, the ease of doing business na uh, direction ng gobyerno natin ngayon. But anyway, sir, well taken. Kita ko, maganda yung uh, gusto mo mangyari. Uh, please go ahead, continue with your presentation. Uh, thank you very much, Your Honor. I understand na uh, we are coming from Your Honor. They might question it. However, my two cents worth of opinion on the matter is there is no such thing of ease of doing business if we want to address terrorism and under transnational crime that could happen within a building there is no substitute for preparation that's my only uh, uh, focus on that your honor thank you sir I, i'm with you with that i'm with you please uh, continue Yes, sir. The other, sir, uh, I, I don't know if we will consider it, is we are also proposing that security agencies can be categorized into three, very similar to the construction industry, that if you are not AAA, you cannot construct high-rise building. My point on the matter is, if you are new in the industry, how can you provide security to a critical infrastructure? Because you have no experience on the matter. So to address that, we are also recommending that security agencies must have three categories. Category one, because you are just starting gaining experience and building up the mission essential equipment that must be needed, is critical lang mag provide the security sa residences and small stores. Category two, maybe subdivisions or uh, related facilities, but category three, critical infrastructures. And it is in category three where the retired PNP and military personnel can come into the picture as qualified security professional. Sayang po yung training nila at ang experience in handling special weapons and armament. That is where they can come in. Uh, for the information, Your Honor, when I was the TCDS, we had a very simple study in NCR, and I know you're aware of this. What happens to the retired military and police professionals after they're uh, leaving the services? Ito po yung nakita namin. Una, eh, dalawa lang po ang pupuntahan dun sa kanilang three years lamsam. Puput up ng sari-sari store. But they are not prepared to become entrepreneur. So lahat ng pangangailan ng pamilya kukunin sa sari-sari store. Baksak agad ang sari-sari store. Secondly, bibili ng tricycle. Pag nasira na yung tricycle, wala na. And therefore, ang lakas ng tentasyon na pumasok sila sa drugs. And this is the appropriate committee, Your Honor, because you also get dangerous drugs. Pumapasok sila dyan dahil wala nang kita. Ganon din sa military. Okay, so if we can provide them uh, gainful employment, particularly for Category 3 security agencies, then we can be assured of professionally trained personnel to secure our critical infrastructures. Especially now, Your Honor, na meron ng drone. I happen to be invited twice in the World Drone Congress done in, in China. And ang nilecture ko doon, yung negative uh, size of drone. Kasi marami ng drone na pwedeng bilhin, pwedeng magbaksak ng lason sa ating water system. O dead ball tayo. Pwede nang magbaksak ng kung ano mang bomba sa any part of the, the territory. Therefore, dapat i-address natin to for the Category 3 security agency who will be prepared to provide security to critical infrastructures. And we have already defined what are critical infrastructures. Hindi yung day one kasi agency, kakilala mo kasi halimbawa yung power plant like Napocor, pasok ka na agad, mag-provide ka ng security. 
wala ka pala may experiences. And that is why for the different categories of agencies, meron din silang iba-ibang training, iba-iba din ang licenses, at iba-iba din ang mission essential equipment that they have to possess. Very similar to the construction industry. When they got AAA, you cannot construct a high-rise building, Your Honor. So these are, in essence, our proposal, Your Honor. And we believe that if they are included in the law, then we can be globally uh, certified to compete also uh, with other globally certified uh, agencies, particularly when ASEAN integration has been completed, ready na po ang mga ASEAN neighbors natin to enter our market. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat, sir, uh, General Gala, sir. Iba na talaga pag uh, masyadong uh, experience yung resource person mo. Marami kang matutunan. But uh, anyway, sir, uh, uh, please submit your position paper to this committee para yes, sir, we will take uh, consideration of everything Thank that you have presented. Thank you very much. Maraming sir. salamat, sir. But uh, you just failed to uh, mention one possibility ng isang... Uh, retired police or military afterwards kung saan siya pupunta. Meron pang isa, sir. Maging politiko. <laughs> I like your honor. That's why we are all very happy we retired personnel that there is one uh, Batol de la Rosa and another one Ping Lacson. Salamat, sir. We are happy kami every time na meron dito kasi you know where we are coming from. Thank Salamat, you much, sir. Honor. Salamat. Thank you. Thank you. I, I am your product, sir. I am your product. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, next, may we consider, may we uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Colonel uh, Joel Sopan, sir? Uh, you have the floor? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for inviting me to this uh, August Chamber of the Senate uh, for the creation or at least a position on 87-83. First, I'd like to greet everybody. Good morning for all those present. Present, uh, the senators who are in the video, uh, Senator Jaime Marcos, and hopefully Senator Art Tolentino is all over there. And I'd also like to acknowledge all the representations from the PMP and uh, the CHED and the FISOP, the PADPAO. And uh, perhaps our, I would see myself as an admin out here because I am not an agency operator. I am not a licensed security guard. But what I am is a security consultant who's been in the industry for the past 35 years. So I have the opportunity, I have had the opportunity to observe the industry from a third person's point of view, looking in from the outside. As we all know by principle, even the greatest chess players they don't see their mistake because they're so close to the chessboard. It is the moron who are less qualified who sees the error of the players. And that is the position where I'm in. So uh, oftentimes I've been challenged with my own agency. But I have been practicing. Yes, I did have, uh, because I have been the operations director of one of the most progressive security industry, uh, security agencies in the Philippines. Uh, and I represent, actually, if you would see in my representation here, I represent uh, an ad hoc group of security industry stakeholders, which means to say we are talking of the entire cognitive map of the security industry that does not only cover the guards and the agencies and the PNP, but rather the consumers and the different other services and as these consumers are further divided into the different sectors. We have the marketing or the uh, Mall Association of the Philippines, uh, the Bank Security Management Association of the Philippines, the Campus Security, all of which have rallied behind me for this cause of making representation with Senate as regarding the improvement of uh, the law that regulates the uh, private security industry. This is why uh, it might be too long, and we have actually formally submitted our position papers to the Secretariat, and uh, I wouldn't like you to hear uh, what I say here because sobrang haba po niya if I have to make a discourse. But I have actually sent this to all the stakeholders, which actually, at first I was on my own on this one, and uh, 
just to give you further uh, a background of what I have, I was the chairman which uh, created the curriculum for the Bachelor of Science for Industrial Security when I was commissioned by, by uh, the Commission on Higher Education through the recommendation of no less than the former chief of PNP, uh, General Bacalso, because he knows me to be that person. And through the recommendation of also General Alfabeto, who copied actually the table of contents of the book that they wrote about security guards to put it in the IRR, which was never implemented because nobody knows how to implement it. And uh, that is exactly where I stand. I am a security consultant now. I have a company called the Stonewall, and I see both sides of a fence having been a having been a an operator myself and being on the consumer side when I was the vice president for Aboitis Transport and Security, which is the mostly terrorized company during my incumbency. So I see both sides of the fence objectively. So I don't have interest here. My only interest that there will be a professional security industry that covers everything. And there has been a lot of misnomer. So uh, you hit it right on the spot when you said, I, I was thinking that we'll just be introducing, but since there was a very good discourse here from uh, 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 the highly esteemed General Galang, and might as well short this uh, uh, better grab the whole thing and express ourselves, but I am a lot better writing my thoughts. Mr. Chairman, I'm totally expressing it. Uh, yes, sir. Chairman, yes, sir. So, um, may, uh, Senator Tolentino, you are uh, recognized. It's uh, give the floor to Senator Tolentino. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, for, well, sir. Uh, just to Go ahead, Go ahead, Senator Tolentino, please. I'm still here. I'm uh, supportive of your measure. Gusto ko lang pakilala itong mga polis natin sa IMOS. Nandito lahat ito. Uh, mga PNP officers na IMOS. Kasama si Mayor Maliksi. IMOS Cavite. Uh, fully supportive sila, uh, Mr. Chair, dito sa measure mo. And I you, likewise express my support. Mamaya na ako, Mr. Chairman. Uh, nagpakita lang muli ako sa iyo dahil uh, kasama ako sa programa mo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Tol, pakita nang yung chief of police mo dyan sa kawit. Bakit kalbo siya? Ginagaya ba niya ako? Or uh, ginagaya lang niya ako? <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, biro lang yan, biro lang yan. Go ahead. Salamat, salamat, Tol. Salamat for your support. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 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 Salamat, sir. Salamat. Thank you, thank you. Regards kay Mayor, Tol. Mayor Maliksi. Regards kay Mayor Maliksi. Right, sir, please, uh, uh, continue. So, yeah, if I may, uh, I might as well read the, position, uh, read the position paper of all the groups. As I have said, the, this has been confirmed by the different representations from the biggest security agencies like the CAT family, Solomon Security, Shooter Security, um, uh, the, the Veterans Scout Security, all of this. Well, they, they are members of PADPAO, uh, some of them are. Uh, they, they, the fact that they have expressed their statement, because this is, has been my observation in the industry, that there is a big uh, silent majority who want change in the administration of the industry as well as in the law. Uh, so, uh, however, they kept their silence simply because ang pinaka dahilan nila sa akin, sir, Ikaw, you could speak your mind because hindi nila kayang ipitin. Pero kami na agency, kayang-kaya nila ipitin no matter what. Pag meron kami sinabing hindi nila kagustuhan. I could quote exactly the person who would say that, who has said that. But anyway, uh, much as I have reservations that everybody would uh, comprehend what I'm going to say, I might as well read the position paper, but I'll have to forgo with the different positions that we have on the provisions that we have observed of our uh, um, House Bill 8783. So if I may, yeah, uh, bear with me for a while. This is our position paper on the Private Security Industry Act or House Bill 8783. We, the members of the ad hoc group of security industry stakeholders, firmly believe that the principle behind laws and legislation 
is to provide a straight path to manage the acts and conducts of people for good order and common good to attain their common objectives. As a matter of course, in time, the growth and sophistication of needs of the beneficiaries of the law and the advancement of technology would render long existing laws inadequate. This inadequacy of the law to address these changes could even be the very impediment to good order that could make the attainment of the common good and goals futile. It should therefore be a matter of necessity that such a law be amended, if not repealed, and be replaced by a new and appropriate law. The crafters of the new law, however, must have a thorough knowledge, deep and learned and enlightened understanding of the domain that is the subject of the law. The new law must be based on knowledge on every facet of the domain and should level the playing field for the equitable exchange of considerations and benefits for all the stakeholders that are in the domain. Such is the case of Republic Act 5487 or the private security law. The RA 5487 must made to regulate the management of the then growing security service industry in its formative years. It was initiated by a handful of pioneer security agency operators who organized themselves to form PADPAO. And the Philippine Constabulary was given the mandate to administer the law and supervise the agencies. RA 5487 has become inadequate and has been overrun by the growth in size, sophistication, and complexity of the needs of the security providers and those who need their services. It has become unresponsive to the changes in the environment and circumstances of the security industry. With this inadequacy came about myriad of problems, a partial list of which is here to attach as Annex A. So it's quite a long list, but I have 22 problems and they are factual. And if you would like to cite evidence as a proof for these problems, it's submitted in the... Uh... Now, in the case of House Bill 87, it was crafted and passed at Congress, even in my presence, to repeal RA 5487 with the noble intention of addressing the listed problems at Annex A. However, a close scrutiny of House Bill 8783 shows that there are no substantial changes that could address the stated problems. I mean, the all stated problems. It is focused on ensuring that the guard which is just one among the many stakeholders in the security service industry receive their rightful share and mandated benefits as provided by law and the opportunity for further education. Both provisions are already covered by existing labor laws. And the Republic Act 10913, also known as the Unified Financial Assistance System for Tertiary Education. The other provision of House Bill 8783 are deemed to be unable to serve the need, needed solutions and provide the environment to address the concerns of the other stakeholders in the security industry services, services industry, I'm sorry. The reasons for these inadequacies and infirmities are stated in the touch Annex B, where each provision of House Bill 8783 was scrutinized by this group whose members have been excluded in the crafting of the subject bill. Another change in the removal uh, is the removal of 200 guards uh, for the security agency to be given a regular license to operate in consideration of the Philippine Competition Law, also known as RA 10667, which prohibits man-made impediments that prevent fair competition in business, as it is uh, to protect the agency owners uh, from the others who would like to put up an agency. However, they remove it altogether. Um, however, the unconditional exclusion of 200 minimum guard requirements from the law would open a floodgate of business opportunities. Business opportunists, like putting up an agency and sell it for a substantial premium. It happened, even, it's happening even now or a small time wannabe operators akin to Sari Sari stores, whose intention could only be 
go earn simply uh, having a or simply having a domain of cards and not the delivery of uh, del uh, delivery of professional security services. It could then be extremely difficult for the administrator administrator of the law to manage much larger number of security agencies, which are more prone to commit violations. It is in view of the above observations, it is the position of the members of the ad hoc group of security industry stakeholders that House Bill 8783 is inadequate, albeit infirm, to address the stated problems of the security industry. Moreover, it cannot provide the atmosphere and environment for equitable exchange of considerations and benefits for all the players in the cognitive map of the private security industry. These are the guards, security agencies, practicing security professionals like I am, suppliers of security hardware, specialized security services, makers and suppliers of uniform, security training facilities, and the customers of all the foregoing serve, and the citizens who expect the professional security services they need and yearn for. As it is well in order to request for the setting aside of House Bill 8783, the members of this group gathered their observations, concerns, experiences, and stock knowledge on the security industry. Together, they have collaborated and collectively acted to draft a substitute bill here to attach as Annex C and as, uh, C and C1 that will address all the stated problems at Annex A. This proposed substitute bill and the rationale are here submitted to the Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drug for scrutiny, consideration, and subsequent approval. Successfully submitted in behalf of the ad hoc group, Joel Jesus M. Supan, Secretariat, and with express conformity of at least 22 people that cons uh, uh, constitute a cross section of the entire security domain not only guards, not only agencies, but we talk of clients, we talk of the general public. As it is right now, if I have to pose this question, does anybody from this auto chamber, I'm talking about the principle of security, of the principle of leadership, of you have to be technically and tactically proficient to lead a particular group. And none, in this August chamber could mention to me these 23 basic functions of the guard. Because as a leader, if you don't know their basic functions, you cannot come up with the law that would manage the industry. Let alone knowing if the guard is doing his job right or not, simply because you don't know their job. And that is exactly the position we're in. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Thank you, sir, for uh, your input. Uh, anyway, uh, you have submitted already your position paper. If we will uh, uh, consider everything and nag-aralan uh, ng uh, secretariat natin. Yes. And uh, b before I proceed, uh, were you not invited during the committee hearings at the uh, House Actually, of Representatives? Uh, just to give you a background of what happened, uh, I wasn't involved about all these things because they have their own group. Suddenly, uh, in the first run, I think it's 7037, uh, the first house bill that came out. Uh, it went to my, somebody sent it to me. Uh, ang pagkasabi, uh, Sir, pakitingin mo nga to, we'd like to comment on it. This person was officially addressed by Congress na walang kaalam-alam sa security because he is the chairman of the Board of Examiner of Criminology. So walang kinalaman. So, I, I, I wrote Congress about it. How come? Then I asked all these people represented here, have you been invited at Congress? They said no. All was there as Pad Pao and the other groups, the Diwa party list, but not the significant players. So, true enough, they convened, and this time we were invited, and they were there, and I was present, but, so to speak, because I already sent them my comments about the, the, what the law is, I have to speak up my mind. Uh, what happened? Everybody was there. And I was there at the waiting room. I was never allowed to enter the conference room. Anyway, here, uh, so you, ka. you have, uh, I have given you the floor as much as thank you, you very much. wish to have the floor. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
PNP, uh, particularly Susya. Alam niyo yung sinasabi ni Sir Sopan na 23 functions ng guard? Uh, na security guard? I think uh, that was called from the book made by uh, 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 Captain Sopan, sir. So ah, it was okay. not included in the IRR, but uh, he just made it, sir, and he's trying to, you know, inject those things to the private security industry. Okay. Anyway, uh, tingnan nyo rin yun. Uh, magamit rin nyo yun. Yes, sir. Okay. Salamat, uh, salamat, sir. Uh, anyway, with, with the indulgence of uh, Colonel uh, Manuel Espujo, sir, uh, you are supposed to be next, but uh, uh, Mr. Delgado has been raising his hand uh, kanina pa. Yeah, you don't mean the... Can I acknowledge him uh, ahead of you, sir? Colonel Berga, Mr. Delgado? Kaya niya pa sa taas ng taas ng kamay. Pasalitan ko muna sa sandali before you. But I, I wouldn't mind the Mr. Bergado taking over. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Please, sir. Uh, you have the Mr. Bergado. You have the floor, sir. Walang, walang sound, sir. Naka-mute naka ka. Uh, ah. Yeah, yeah, man. Okay. Hello, hello. Yeah, I, okay na, sir. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, for this uh, distinct honor to be invited to this uh, forum. And of course, I would like to greet our colleagues in the industry. Uh, they have said, well, their peace. But this time, we would like also to take our opportunity to say what we want. Now, generally, uh, with due respect, we accept uh, the bill that was presented by Congress except that we would like to raise only some concerns. Right now, Your Honor, the present policy is agencies are not allowed to deploy protective agents. Neither are we allowed to be accredited to deploy. But if we, we examine the definition of PSA, it includes protective services. So with this, we would like to propose that agencies should be allowed to be accredited to be able to deploy protective agents because posting protective agents or BIP escort is a matter of trust and confidence. Now, all the principals would like to get Mahina, you signal mo, sir. Mahina. Buffering ka. Mr. Bergado? Accredited. Uh, uh, continue, please. Continue. Protective agents because uh, it is it is not on a regular basis. We need not create another juridical personality to be able to post protective agents, Your Honor. That is our predicament. And uh, we would like to push that we should be even just be accredited not to create another protective detective agent to be able, because the reason for it, it is not in the course of a regular business, but only on occasional and impermanent basis. Second, Your Honor, with regards to the validity of the license, which was approved by Congress for five years, well and good, but we propose that these operators be given an option to select for two, three, or four years because of the financial burden. If you have 1,000, uh, uh, what they call, firearms, that is 1,600 per firearm. So if you multiply that by five years, that would be that would entail a lot of money, Your Honor. So we propose that in the IRR, it should be given, and the operator should be given two or three or two options. So to at least to, to be able to lighten his problem on the financial capability. The third, Your Honor, is the requirement on the law which says that to have an LT, to give an LTO, you should, be, you should have 100 guards. The trouble is, how can you get 100 guards if you do not have yet an LTO? So we propose that an applicant should be given a license starting from zero base and be given two, two years to operate 
And if he fails to get 100 guards, then he cannot renew anymore. So, yun po ang dapat. Hindi yung... <laughs> tama, 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 sir. May, may, may interrupt. Para nakita ko yung logic ng sinasabi mo. Di ba? Before ka bibigyan ng uh, LTO, you have to have a minimum of 100 guards. Yes, sir. So, paano ka mag-guarder ng 200 guards kung wala ka LTO? Yes, Your Honor. Let's talk in the pain to react to this. As a belly, sir, pakinggan ko mo na yung reaction ni General Bilefler. Yes, sir. That is Paano? what uh, the current IRR prescribes, sir. But we also acceded to the request of PADPAW that it uh, can be made to a zero-base uh, uh, LTO, sir. Na kahit wala pang gwardiya yung uh, agency, uh, they can uh, apply and they can be given and approved by LTO, sir. Yun po kasi, sir, yung nasa that current IRR ngayon, sir. On the other hand, paano mo ngayon uh, masagot yung uh, rason bakit ni-require yan to avoid opening the floodgates of unscrupulous businessmen? Yung meron uh, porque may linya lang sa susya, kukuha ng lisensya, kahit na wala siyang gwardiya, pagkatapos ibinta niya doon sa uh, May may kapital, may tira na pwede magdigusyo. Eh, yun yung nakikita ng iba. Kaya, kaya yan, ginawang 200 noon, requirement para yung mga scrupulous businessman na um, uh, gano'n nga ang ginagawa, mapipigilan. Pa paano mo masagot uh, yan? Sir, uh, nag-i-issue po ang social ng temporary license, sir. Before they can have uh, less than 200 guards, they're given na uh, temporary license, sir. Uh, in order for them to have at least a minimum 200 guards bago sila, sir, mag... Uh, Renew. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Continue, uh, Mr. Bergado. Continue, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Another concern is with regards to the penal clause in Section 24. It is said that any violation is punishable by six years imprisonment and one, one million. Hindi po graduated. Dapat po graduated. It will depend on the 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 gravity of defense committed. So, dapat po, graduated ito. Hindi po na sinasabi, any violation will be penalized by 1 million and 6 years imprisonment. So, gusto po natin na i-amend yung section 24. Nabigyan po ng, ng gagawin graduated depending on the gravity of the offense committed. So, another concern po yung tungkol sa ngayon po, Tungkol sa licensee, we propose that not just any person should be allowed to acquire a license as LTO of, uh, as operator. Because in some cases, there are licenses who are not in any manner connected with the agency, just merely uh, appointed or designated, but he has no interest whatsoever. Wala po siya investment doon. Wala. So, wala po siyang accountability. So, in case of anything, he will just go scot-free and the owners of the agency will also go, go, go scot-free. So, we suggest, Your Honor, that to qualify as a licensee aside from the other requirements like uh, baccalaureate, degree, uh, baccalaureate degree holder or what we call uh, uh, go, uh, good moral standing and with neuro and drug test, he should be at least a part owner of the agency para po mayroon siyang accountability. So, isa po yung nakikita namin na, na dapat po ma-include sa batas. All the rest ay okay naman po ang aming ano doon. Of course, uh, the suggestions of the other uh, resource persons are okay, especially yung kay Galang, maganda po yun. Pero yung sinasabi po ni Mr. Supa na representing the industry, Medyo mayroon po kaming konting comment doon kasi mayroon po kaming nakausap na mga uh, operators na they did not sign any document which sinasabi. So yun lang po ang gusto namin ipakita na even Mr. Datuin uh, uh, who is present uh, has wrote me a letter na hindi po nila naintindihan yung lahat. But the rest of the other things so I Okay naman, Your Honor. So, for that, Your Honor, thank you very much for the privilege of being able to participate in this uh, August body. Salamat po. Good afternoon.
Thank you, sir. Anyway, you have already submitted your position paper. Uh, we will uh, consider everything that uh, uh, you put into this uh, position paper. Salamat, sir, for uh, sharing your inputs. For your um, information. Here, uh, we'll hear from uh, Colonel uh, Espio, sir. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, the discussions or the uh, issues presented by both General Gallan and uh, Colonel Sultan. Uh, as far as General Gallan is concerned, magandang idea naman. However, the PNP is not capable of doing that job. Yeah. Uh, Singapore, there is such a thing as a crime prevention to environment design. Okay, well, uh, the PNP is incapable of, of doing its of job? The job of, uh, let's say, inspecting buildings that are being constructed. Okay. So, so yeah. Now, it's a local government that can conduct this. And uh, practicing the principle of crime prevention through environment design. It means to be him, you can put up a building and still be able to protect the the uh, the environment and also the the neighborhood from uh, from uh, crimes that will be committed in that area. That will be probably among squatters to stay along the streets. You're not preventing crime, you're encouraging crime to be, to proliferate in the area. Yes, sir, but, but excuse me, so I think that what you're saying, General Galang, is that there is a body of specialists, of yes, security uh, experts, who will advise here in PNP, particularly si SG or SUSIA, so that they will give clearance to the uh, building uh, Occupancy. Pero, 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 uh, yes, uh, that, that is true. Yes, Your Honor, uh, I did not mention that the PNP will inspect, inspect, except that they will come in upon the approval by the professional safety and security officer of the emergency preparedness plan for the occupancy of the building. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Well, uh, what I said, yeah. Your Honor, is that the occupancy permit may come from the CSG. Okay. Not CSG inspecting the building. I am definitely mm -hmm. It's a tall order, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, continue, please. Uh, tama tama yun, no? Tama yun. No? Pero, kanyang nangihirapan ng PNP to manage all of these things. Uh, but as far as the local government is concerned, trabaho nila yan because they the only ones issue the occupancy permit. So before that building can be occupied, we should confirm with it. With this uh, uh, crime prevention uh, procedures and, of course, disaster control. Hmm? Uh, anyway, at any rate, uh, Mr. Bagrados uh, mentioned all of our. Uh, we, we, we accept, uh, in fact, we encourage the amendments to the Republic Act 5487. And the reason it is, it's not eh. And Day in, day out, maraming problema na encounter ang mga agencies and also the guards. Uh, hindi na nila malaman kung sino susundan because sa PNP naman, hindi na tatagal ang walang continuity doon sa management ng SOSIA and uh, CSG. After six months, magpapalit na naman yung commander. So, wala, katulad din sa uh, in any organization na hindi nagtatagal yung mag-manistong, walang continuity sa operation and uh, consistency in the management of the industry. Ayun naman sa sabi ko, aside from that, nagsabi mo naman po kami na yung position paper naman regarding the amendments of the PR Republic Act 5487, that is, it's uh, 87, 83. And uh, very comprehensive meaning we mentioned is about by God about this. I remember Mr. Sadiko, my name is Ramat, and uh, you have taken note of this uh, amendments, uh, I mean, this uh, uh, house bill, 
and uh, we're discussing it now. Matagal lang dapat na pag may, may imprimito. Let us improve it and as far as implementing the regulations are concerned, dapat mas uh, maganda ang ating uh, gagawin sa implementing rules and consistent dapat yung implementing rules. And we can see yung mga upo doon, gagawin yung sarili ng monumento. Thank you, sir. Thank you for, 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 for thank you for your input. Well, uh, anyway, you just said more about the uh, changing of the guards of uh, PNP Russia, na mabulis lang. Yes. We, we cannot go about it because uh, that is really the nature and the reality of the organization. It is uh, uh, we cannot stop that. That that's that's reality. But anyway, suffice it to say that uh, although. Guards are changing, commanders are changing, but the policies, rules, and regulations implemented by the agency remains the same. Hindi pa masiguro uh, personality based yung uh, sosya, kundi uh, uh, rules based yan. Kung anong rules na nandiyan na kalagay, dapat yan ang implementa. Hindi po pwede nga, uh, ako yung nasiga, itong gawin natin. Diyan yan, uh, it will take time for a policy to be amended sa PNP, di ba? Uh, nandiyan yan sa yung manual na dapat susundin nyo yan at uh, otherwise, uh, administratively liable yung isang commander kapag hindi sinusunod yung mga uh, standards, uh, rules and procedures na nakalagay sa manual ninyo. So, am I correct? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Mayroon pa ba dito? Physically present, gusto magsalita before I recognize another uh, virtual uh, attendee. So, from here, uh, may we recognize Mr. Michael Batuin, the National President, Security Guards Association, 59ers of the Philippines, SIGA 59ers. Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Hello po, sir. Magandang araw po. Before, before, uh, Mr. Da, ano ng Hello, ano, sir. Na, go ahead. Ano, ano ng ng uh, yan po ang aming call sign, sir. Kapag uh, nagtatawagan po kami ng mga guardsa, ka 59 ka uh, security. It's on the 10 code, sir. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for the clarification. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, to the Chairman of the Committee on Public Order, Dangerous Drugs, uh, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, sir. To the Honorable Member Senators of this Committee, sirs, ma'am, at sa lahat po ng mga kinakatawan uh, ng pribadong industriya, ng seguridad, sang ligtas at mapayapang araw po sa ating lahat. First and foremost, on behalf of all the almost 600,000 plus legally registered and licensed security guards in the Philippines, please allow me to thank you for this opportunity and to be able to air our position in House Bill 8783. Ako po si Michael or Mike Datuin. I am a strong advocate of the professionalization, upliftment, and unification of all security guards, as well as the private security industry as a whole. Starting as a security guard 20 years ago, seeing the horrors, sacrifices, and success stories of our fellow security personnel firsthand, I, he I held strong as I rose from the ranks in the security industry and started empowering my colleagues in the simple way I can, working hand in hand with our government's armed forces and law enforcement groups being its force multiplier, but just as well as working close with our Department of Labor and Employment as member of its various advisory groups and tripartite council, fighting for the rights of our security guard Guard force from social inequality, unfair labor practices, working conditions and wages, as well as the possible threats to this profession from anti-government groups trying to exploit our noble profession. This COVID-19 has been a very, very heavy burden and pain to most of the Filipinos, especially the non-medical frontliners, among of which are the lowly security guards. They man most, if not all, medical facilities and most, if not all, government offices, private, bu private buildings, quarantine facilities, and residences. These guard forces had suffered yet tried and continued to sustain the stability of the facilities despite their difficult condition professionally 
and personally. Not being able to go home to their families, not being allowed equal access in checkpoints, in some, being questioned during its evening and early morning travel to work and not getting support from some government financial assistance when laid off. Not all security agencies were approved for TUPAD assistance or tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantaged or displaced workers by the Department of Labor, which I wouldn't know why, <clears throat> but uh, most, if not all, security agencies were able to submit their uh, request. A community-based package of assistance that provides emergency employment for displaced workers, underemployed and seasonal workers. Hence, most of the guards were not able to get ayuda or financial support since they were recognized by the LGUs as people who were employed. I know this for a fact because I have received to date 576 requests for assistance varying from being terminated, being relieved, being unemployed for more than six to seven months, their families being evicted from the space they are renting, no food to eat, not being recognized as essential worker in checkpoints and some dying from COVID without company or government assistance. Emphasis on some. There are good companies that support their security personnel. We hope, sana all. At long last, ang kinatawan ng kagwardiyahan ng buong Pilipinas ay nabigyan ng pagkakataong may parating ang hinaing at matagal ng saloobin ng aking mga kasamahan sa hanay ng mga manggagawang pribado at pampublikong tanod ng Pilipinas. Higit kami nagpapasalamat kay Senator Bato sa kanyang komite sa uh, napapanahong pag-uusap na ito upang mailahad ang matinding karagdagang pahirap dulot ng pandemyang ito sa aming hanay. To inform the body, almost 50% of the legally employed, if not more than this, has lost their jobs as practicing security guards. Nabanggit naman po ni General Gala. And others are not being paid their wages. And some others are not being housed and protected by their employees and clients while rendering their duties as security guards in each facilities they service. In fairness, baka po yung ibang agencies, hindi ko rin po nakakasingil. Kahabag-habag ang buhay ng mga gwardiya dahil sila ang isang halimbawa ng overwork and underpaid ng mga empleyado. Karamihan ay kumikita lamang ng 400 pesos sa 12 oras na, 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 pa, ng pagbabantay sa isang araw. This is an NCR rate. Ang masaklap, minsan, umaabot pa ng 24 hours hanggang 36 hours. Worse, hanggang 48 hours ang pagbabantay nila sa kanilang pwesto ng halos walang tulog ngunit wala man lang daw overtime pay at maging night differential at ito'y dahil wala silang karilyebo. Madalas rin ay wala rin benepisyo ang mga kasamahang gwardiya. Ngunit kinakaltas naman ito sa kanilang sahod. We ask the question, why? And why is it proliferating? If we try to assess at the Department of Labor, Almost 40% of all complainants are security guards. This is almost half of the numbers of complainants all over the country. Napakarami na pong mabibigat na sitwasyon ng paglalabis ang aming dinaranas na kailangan na pong mas masolusyonan once and for all to prevent further incidents related to this profession. May only cite a few incidents to reflect on. Green Hill sausage taking incident, the shooting of a guard to a violator in Pasay, to a beating of a security guard of a homeowner, to an illegal deduction of an operator of a security agency to its guards, to an Abu Sayyaf, a security guard, to a foreign security guard rendering duty in the Philippines, to a foreign-owned security group managing of multiple security agencies, and worst of all, the cutthroating competition in the private security industry. As I have been invited at this hallowed hall for discussion as resource person on the House bill, authored and sponsored by Congressman Michael Edgar Glipay and other co-sponsors and co-authors, I wish to take the, opportunity, the rare opportunity to convey these messages of real circumstances in the current plight of our 600,000 plus strong security personnel. As a member of the Department of Labor and Employment Private Security Industry, the Tripartite Council, and the supporter of Department Order 150, Dash 16, the revised guidelines governing the employment and working conditions of security guards and other private security personnel in the private security industry. My prayer 
is for all of the above mentioned to be highly considered in the debate and discussion in consideration of the creation or crafting of this bill, as well as BO 150-16 of the DOLE across the country efficiently. It answers all the industry's concerns, security guards training and standards, working conditions, guards and agency operators' income. Being in the front line requires so much acceptance of risk with only a minimum wage salary. We are no different from our soldiers, police, overseas workers, nurses, and others from most who most often needs to be away from family to pursue a better life, a good life, and a reason for, li for living, even if it sacrifices their own. Wala pong medalya, wala pong uh, pislay or ano pa pong uh, beneficyo. Of which this House bill recognizes this and all others and can be given solution through the proper crafting of the new IRR as it would be properly crafted, especially administratively, which sadly most are uh, placed on. In closing, allow me to share Cebu Royal Plant versus Deputy Minister of Labor, J. Cruz, GR number L58639, August 12, 1987. It says, and I quote, We take this opportunity to reaffirm our concern for the lowly worker who, often at the mercy of his employers, must look up to the law for his protection. Fittingly, that law regards him with tenderness and even favor, and always with faith and hope in his capacity to help in shaping the nation's future. It is error to take him for granted. He deserves our abiding respect. How society treats, treats him will determine whether the knife, or in this case, the gun, in his hands shall be a carrying tool for beauty and progress or an angry weapon of defiance and revenge. The choice is obvious. Of course, if we cherish him as we should, we must resolve to lighten the weight of centuries of exploitations and disdain that bends his back but does not bow his head. Now, ay mag, magabayan po tayong lahat ng mga ng may kapal tungo sa ikaw unlad ng industriya ng paggawa at mapagyabong ang ating uri ng magagawang gwardiya. Mike, the two end po. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, Mr. Mike uh, Datun, for your uh, input. Thank you very much. Next, uh, we give the floor to Mr. Uh, to ASIC uh, Manuel Felix of the DILG. Are you still around, sir? Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Sir, uh, you have With the floor. With your may I proceed? Another, another uh, intimidating upperclassman. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the Chair, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, Ronald De La Rosa, the other members, Honorable members of this committee, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Um, the ILG supports the... Uh, the bill which regulates the private security industry and the uh, practice of uh, security profession uh, as it serves as a tool to ensure that private personnel are highly efficient, capable, and competent, enabling them to effectively and efficiently respond to the increasing demands of the modern society. In addition, it seeks to eliminate the unfortunate reality of rampant human rights violation brought about by private armies guised as private security agencies. Moreover, the, the proposed measure um, provides a framework wherein private security personnel would have to possess certain qualifications as completing a pre-licensed training program, as well as the necessity of meeting the required standard in order to practice and perform the duties of a security or training personnel. The subject legislature measures is also in consonance with section four and five of article two of the 1987 constitution, which states section four, the primary duty of the government is to serve and protect the people. Section five, the maintenance of peace and order, the protection of life, liberty, and property, 
and the promotion of the jail welfare are essentials to the enjoyment by all people of, of the blessings of democracy. Mr. Chair, uh, we have our position and uh, we will submit that uh, to the Secretariat for the consider your consideration. Thank you so much uh, once again, Mr. Chair. And I mean, sir, I'm sir, uh, Asik uh, Mani Felix. Thank you, sir. Uh, from here, uh, we will hear from Mr. Uh, Philip Jason Roque, Division Chief, Business uh, Name Registration Division of the Department of Trade and Industry, representing uh, Secretary Mim Lopez. Are we still around, sir? Go ahead. Yes, the floor. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to the Honorable Chairman of the Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Threat, uh, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, and all the members of uh, the committee. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Your Honor, our comment uh, focuses only on the Section 8 of, uh, of uh, House Bill 8783, particularly on the application for a license to operate. While the Department of Trade and Industry issues a uh, certificate of registration, uh, but it's limited only on the use of a business name. Uh, based on the, the current practice, it's still the local government units are in charge in issuing a license to operate unless uh, this bill will, uh, will, will tell the DTI that it's, it's already a DTI who will issue license to operate for this, uh, for this industry. That's all, uh, Your Honor. Uh, thank you so much and good morning. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much for that input. Next, uh, we will hear from Attorney Clifford uh, Pascual, PISDA Legal Division, uh, representing uh, Secretary Sid Lapena of, uh, of PISDA. You have the floor, sir, Attorney Clifford Pascual. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, right. Members of this uh, honorable committee and fellow resource persons, magandang umaga po. In behalf of the agency, uh, let me express its concurrence to the objectives of the proposed bill as we recognize the need to professionalize the private security industry. In support of this bill, we would like to highlight, Mr. Chair, that the agency is currently offering programs in security services NC1 and 2. And in relation to section, one, section 21 of the said bill, security guards, watchmen, or private detectives may avail of the various scholarship programs being offered by the agency, which include the Training for Work Scholarship Program and the Tulong Trabaho Scholarship Program, among others. The authority, Mr. Chair, is determined to expand and strengthen its mandate, programs, and services to reach out and serve different clients, including the private security industry, to transform and improve the lives of the sector for the better. Rest assured of TESDA's continued support of this bill once enacted to law. Mr. Chair, thank you very much, and once again, good morning, Paul. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Attorney. Uh, we want to see your face, but uh, uh, hindi ka na makita. But anyway, uh, I apologize, Mr. Chair, because my internet uh, connection is not that good. Sorry, Paul, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Maraming salamat. Next, uh, we will hear from uh, Mr. Ramiro Busalan, uh, Busalanan, President, Bank Security Management Association. You have the floor, sir. Something. Sir, good morning to the chairman of the committee on the Corder and the Drugs, Jal Serbato de la Rosa, sir, and to the members of the committee present this meeting, good morning. I am General Romero G. Busalanan, the incumbent president. of the associations of bank security management in the Philippines. And these are composed of the chief security, security officers of all uh, banking industry here in the Philippines. Our uh, 
position for the House Bill 8783. We have uh, the association's position and uh, those uh, comments or counter proposal is uh, others are uh, basically similar in nature of what has been presented by uh, Mr. Supan. And we are preparing also a uh, possession paper for this, sir, and be submitted to your committee as we finally drafted our position paper. So our, uh, basically, what we have seen in the House Bill 8783, we'll be proposing some revisions on the on the probations of the compensation benefits, the uh, ladderized training and education subsidy, and we have some counter proposals and be submitted to your committee, as I mentioned earlier. So, uh, the Association of Bank Security Management of the Philippines Incorporated is. Uh, really happy for inviting us to present our side and representing this industry and we are uh, actually we are uh, on our security guards we have uh, to ensure that the highly trained bank security guards imbued with virtues of professionalism integrity and discipline through an update, efficient, and re reliable training that's supposed to we will be conducting as on us. This will be uh, in, in uh, included in the uh, revisions of Republic Act 5487. So again, uh, thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for inviting us. And we need to, really need to change the old existing law 5487. Thank you, sir, and good morning. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ramiri G. Busalanan for that uh, info. Rami, salamat. Uh, moving on from attorney Gerardo Tan, the representative of uh, Securities and Exchange Commission. Sir, you have the floor. For that, we would like to thank the Walang sound, uh, wala, walang sound, please, uh, i-unmute, i-unmute nyo siguro. Alfredo, sir, nakamute ka. Sir. Sir. Hello. Medyo mahina, uh, pakibuli, uh, taasan mo ng bulim kundi yung mic mo. Good morning, sir, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Sir. Now there's sir. Hello, sir. Good morning. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Loud and clear. Yeah, yeah. May kunti. May kunti kami na rinig. Next. Alam ako, sir. Next. Nakaroon ng ano eh. Well. May kunti. Hello, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, na, sir. Okay, na, sir. Yes, sir. Clear? Ayan, uh, medyo mahina. Lapit mo lang sa microphone yung, uh, sa bibig mo yung microphone. Para medyo marit. Yes, yeah, yeah, sir. Yan, sige, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, I-direct ko na po sa point. Uh, yung manifest sa submission of our position paper once approved by the commission. In the meantime, sir, meron kami specific comments sa uh, certain provisions ng uh, proposed bill. Section 5, the last paragraph, sir, says the minimum capital requirement and minimum bank deposits required of private security agencies shall be determined by the chief of the PNP. For, for, for the information, uh, please be informed that 
corporations engage in the business of contracting, placement, or supply of manpower by the security agency, the Commission currently requires that the minimum paid of capital, the amount of 5 million, must be complied before we approve the certificate of registration. This is in compliance with the uh, Department Order Number 174, Series of 2017, issued by the Department of Labor and Employment. For the, for the for Section 24 on Penal Clause, Sir, excuse me, excuse me, uh, Attorney Jerry Tan. Uh, my position paper ba yan yung sinasabi mo? Yes, sir. We will submit the position paper. Yes, position paper yan. Pag-submit na lang kasi mamalabi talaga. Hindi ka naman masyado maintindihan dito. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will submit accordingly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. But before you leave, uh, may tanong lang kami dito sa'yo. Uh, para sa SEC, uh, do you agree with the proposal of security agencies to relax the citizenship requirements for owners of a private security agency. Please uh, uh, give your comment on that question. We do not agree on that, sir, especially on the uh, security, security agency listed on the negative case as issued under the executive order number 65 <coughs> signed by President Duterte. That Security agencies must be 100% Filipino owned. Okay. Uh, so, maintindihan kita. Kahit pa paano. This is part of our... You, you don't agree. You don't agree. Yes, sir. You, you don't agree to relax the uh, requirement. Kailangan talaga 100% uh, Filipino owned. That, that's your position, right? Am I correct? Salamat, salamat. Yun na lang, pakisubmit na lang yung position paper na uh, afterwards. Yes, sir, will do. Salamat, salamat. Thank you, sir. Uh, from here, uh, Joel Aglipa is already around. Uh, may we hear from him, sir? Joel Aglipa, sir? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much uh, for uh, allowing me to uh, be part of this hearing. Uh, I would like also to greet uh, uh, the members of the committee, uh, Senators uh, Tolentino and Marcos, and of course, fellow uh, attendees basically and virtually. Uh, as Chairman Emeritus of uh, uh, the Diwa Party List, who is one of the proponents of House Bill 8783, I endorse the uh, House Bill, uh, considering that uh, for the last uh, 11 years uh, since uh, uh, Diwa Party List is uh, in Congress, uh, we started uh, to uh, 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 situate that uh, the interest of the industry is uh, being represented. And, uh, uh, and since 11 years ago, uh, this bill had been already in Congress, but uh, it's only for uh, now uh, in this uh, 18th Congress that uh, the bill uh, has passed the House and now uh, being championed uh, uh, in the Senate by uh, our uh, the chairman na, uh, of this committee. And I also endorse uh, uh, the proposal of the uh, PADPAW being the chairman emeritus of the PADPAW. Uh, for the other inputs from uh, our brothers uh, in the industry, uh, I uh, those which can be accommodated uh, because uh, uh, because uh, it will be very easy uh, considering uh, considering the limitations of time, uh, but those could not, which cannot be considered, maybe may I request the uh, PNP uh, just to accommodate them in the uh, IRR uh, that will uh, uh, be uh, made uh, after uh, the uh, law had been passed. So to all of you, uh, uh, my, re my only wish and prayer is that for this uh, Bill 8783, to pass the Senate and uh, become a law and uh, for all of us uh, to uh, make it work uh, uh, and uh, of course uh, for those that uh, were not uh, included in the law, the interest or the, the things that I want to be included, maybe we can discuss this uh, with the PNP 
when they come up with the IRR. Again, I would like to say thank you to the chairman, thank you to the members of the committee, uh, thank you to all the attendees. Uh, salamat po. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, again, you mentioned about the IRR. Uh, again, uh, I would uh, like to remind the PNP, once you crop the IRR, uh, be sure uh, you do not go beyond the intents of the law. Kasi may yan palagi reklamo ng mga legislators na pagdating sa crafting ng IRR, ginagawa kayo ng sariling batas, parang ganun. Should be guided. You should be guided by the intents of the law. Thank you. Thank you very much. From here, we recognize Dr. Yolohio Reyes, the Vice President in CR for Campus Security and Safety Management Association. Good morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. Uh, sir, I acknowledge and I also push through with the recognition of the bill uh, for the protection and also for the proper welfare of our security personnel and also the safety of the security uh, people working in the industry. I also would like to give thanks to other members of the committee and also our contingent in the the in the endeavor for a better working condition both security the clients and people around within the community sir there's so much thing that we have to talk about this item and there's so much uh, discrepancy that we have experienced also with our people in the field and i guess with this bill we can answer those issues and uh, uh, move forward to a better society for our people in the field. That's all, sir. Maraming salamat, Dr. Yulo Hilarius. Thank you for that. Next, may we call on Colonel Almos Alabi, the President of Mall Security Management Association of the Philippines. You have the floor, sir. Colonel Aibus Alabe, are you still around? Kung wala na? Your Honor. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Distinguished. Thank you, Your Honor. Distinguished guests, good morning. The Mall Security Management Association of the Philippines would like to highlight the importance of this house bill and that is uh, to raise the level of professionalism and uh, efficiency of the guards of the security agencies and the security in the to ensure that our malls would be able to conduct its business successfully and safeguard others importantly customers and the general public as a whole from danger and from harm. We therefore reiterate our full support to the efforts of the committee and uh, we would like to wish more power to uh, its chairman, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa and his uh, distinguished committee members and um, to the House of Senate. Thank you very much. Stay safe and good morning, everyone. Maraming salamat, sir, uh, Colonel uh, Alabi. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, uh, may we recognize Colonel Manuel Bruneris, General Manager, International Engagement of the EMME, Consultancy Incorporated. Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Good morning, Honorable Senator De La Rosa, and good morning to all. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I just... uh, Hindi ko lang makita, sir. Can, can we see your face? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir. Yes. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank yes, you, sir. sir. Mabuti yung uh, magkakarapan tayo face-to-face -face para <laughs> magkakilalanan. <laughs> yes, sir. Salama, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. In behalf of the EME Group of Companies, I, and as General Manager for International Engagement of EME Consultancy, I just want to endorse this House Bill H783 uh, to become a law uh, and get on with the business of uh, 
having our private security industry uh, elevated to a uh, level that will be competitive uh, at the very least in the region. That's all, sir. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat, sir. Thank you very much. With that, uh, meron pa bang gusto magsalita? Did I fail to call on uh, anyone who is uh, around virtually or physically na hindi pa nakapagsalita? If there's none, uh, I think uh, we have taken, uh, we have discussed a lot already. And I would like to thank uh, everyone for a very fruitful discussion. At maraming salamat sa inyong pagdalo. Lalo-lalo na uh, nandito ngayon sa loob ng uh, uh, hall. Uh, we will refer the bill to a technical working group for a more specific and detailed discussion of the, of the proposed bill. Now, remind the bill to submit the position papers as soon as possible for the consideration of the committee. This hearing is uh, hereby adjourned. Salamat, salamat sa iyo lahat, salamat.